like around 3,000 at least per month. Five, six grand every single month. And if you don't, you're coming out of pocket. $300 at the laundromat. Around $10,000 in like revenue altogether. Welcome to the Delphin, our Airbnb in downtown Grand Rapids. Let's go get a tour. All right, welcome to the main entrance. See, we have uh, open concept. We have the living room right over here, kitchen. So this was one of the bigger cosmetic updates that we did. Uh, completely redid the kitchen, some nice granite countertops. We went with a black and white theme, keep it kind of modern, simple, and rustic, uh, while being historic. We are in a historic district as well. So let's go check out the rooms this way. All right, bedroom number one. So this is real Airbnb. Our cleaner's coming tonight. We got somebody staying tomorrow. Uh, so it's not all pretty, but if you see the photos, you'll be able to check it out. So pretty standard, uh, we, you know, we have the exposed brick, the HVAC, so a little different. Uh, color concepts in design, that was actually my partner. I am probably like the least design oriented person. So I just kind of left it up to him. Uh, he picked everything out. The only thing I'm kind of iffy about is the mustard chair, but I don't know, comment below if you like it. I'm not really a fan. So pretty standard, we do have a washer and dryer, uh, and that's the biggest thing that I found out in Airbnb is sheets, laundry. That's the biggest pain, is doing the flips and having a lot of sheets here stored ready, but cleaning them quick enough uh, so they don't get musty, right? It's, it's a lot of work and effort that goes into it, something I never thought about, but uh, let's go to room number two. Actually, we gotta go to the bathroom, because these are cool too. Before we go to room, and I told you the cleaner's coming. I promise you, this is this is real, not stage, true Airbnb style. So yeah, we completely redid the bathrooms. Each bathroom that you're going to see on this tour is gonna to be a little bit unique. We have three different color concepts. Uh, this one's black and white to kind of match the kitchen in this main floor. We got subway tiles. You see, we do have the curtain. Eventually what we do want to get is glass, but uh, budget got out of hand and we had to make some cuts. So had to throw some curtains up. All right, bedroom number two. This one's probably the biggest. So this one's blue, gold, white. Uh, one thing you'll kind of notice too that we did was we actually painted the baseboards blue. They were white before, but we thought it just kind of stood out a little too much. So we kept this one kind of black and blue. I was a little iffy with it, but it's been growing on me. Uh, one of my favorite parts though is the bathroom. We got white, blue, and gold. And this shower probably took us the most amount of money in time uh, for our, our towel guy to do this pattern. So, but it came out very nice. We're impressed. Again, got the curtains. All right, and for the last floor on the top, we have about over 2,000 square feet, two different levels. We have a main level that's on the second story and then a very, very top third level. So this one kind of has its own private little, uh, I guess, living room area in a way. Over here, we have a bedroom. So as you notice, they're all kind of different color concepts. This one's green. And uh, again, the bed, we got to get, get these made. But so the original concept behind this one was we were gonna have two bedrooms and we decided to keep that kind of a living room. So it kind of changed, but the original plan, I believe was gonna be like a closet. So it just got changed up a little bit. So we just put a bed in there and made this like a little living room. So bathroom number three. So the all black modern bathroom. So a few things we still have to do. Uh, up here, we got a couple touch-ups but I love the shower. I love how this looks and how it kind of came out. I actually want to do a similar concept in my condo, all black, I definitely like it. So that's it. Three bathroom, three bedroom, laundry room, and uh, kitchen living room. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. My name is Chris Ake. I am one of the three owners here at the Delphin located downtown Grand Rapids. This was a three bedroom, three bathroom apartment on top of a building downtown that we decided to convert to an Airbnb. I've been in real estate for about seven years. I started in 2017 with one of my partners, Brent Fisher, who's actually a partner here on the project. And we do have one other owner that we met a couple of years ago. Hey, I'm Brent Fisher. I'm partner of Virgin Solar Real Estate. And right now we created this really cool Airbnb called the Delphin. So the Delphin, we closed on this project the summer of 2022, I believe, or almost summer of 2023. And what we basically did was a lot of cosmetic work, updated the bathrooms, as you see in the background, we did the kitchen, and what you probably have seen or will see in the tour, uh, all the bedrooms, furnished everything, and uh, we listed it. And for me, 
and my partner Brent. This is our first time doing Airbnb, so we didn't know what to expect. Our other partner actually had a few others, so he kind of helped us along with some of the things, logistics wise, uh, to get it listed, to flip it, to market it. So it's definitely been a learning experience for us. Uh, it's only been live for about four weeks on the market. Uh, we've generated some revenue so far, so I think we had it for about four weeks now and we've generated around $10,000 so far. Uh, not all of that is collected, right? I think about 30% of that's collected. And then you have your future bookings. So, you know, August, September, right? Things like that. Is that through Airbnb, Verbo, or website? So us getting started listing it was mainly, we have it just on Airbnb. We like to do Verbo, and there's also like third-party softwares that you could basically use, and it'll sync all the calendars together versus manually doing it. For us, we're just trying to figure out systems and we're keeping it very simple. So just listing on Airbnb for now, because as you've seen through the tour was even the cleaning, we're trying to figure out like a solid cleaning person, the protocol for cleaning, uh, walkthroughs, checklist, that all takes time. And if you don't have systems already set up, you have to build those. So we're in the process now of building those and getting those set up. Um, you know, eventually want to get more software to automate things. So currently how it works is we get a booking, we have one of four people who might message on the app. We're all co-hosts, so we look, we get a message. If somebody doesn't message, we message. So we all kind of handle it. So that's just how we're doing it now, right? And I enjoy that because it's a hands-on approach for everybody to kind of learn those things until we could start delegating off, uh, you know, those certain tasks. Can you say like what led you into wanting to own the Airbnb? Yeah, I mean, really for us, like the reason why we thought this would be good for Airbnb, purely for making more money. You know, because you look at this and you look downtown at the market comparables and go, we have a three bedroom, three bathroom, apartment, condo, whatever you'd want to call it. How much money could you get for that per room? Maybe you could get $1,200 per room, right? So, you know, you might be able to max this out at four grand possibly. And then us just kind of running calculations, we thought there's a bigger opportunity to do something unique, different from what's already out there. There's a lot of hotels down here. They're all kind of standard. You know, this being in a historic district, you see the exposed brick, it's a little different. You know, people kind of want their own thing and their own kind of getaway. So number one, it was, hey, we, we see an opportunity. We think it's gonna make more money than an apartment. Number two, we want to try it, you know, and see if it works. Uh, you could always fall back and go on to the apartments and rent that out, right? So so that's kind of really it. We just thought it would probably work and be cool. We wanted to try it, thought I'd make more money. You know, that's kind of the end of the goal, right? Is to make more money. Uh, otherwise, why are you doing it? You know, it's being honest. So yeah, that, that's kind of why. Um, it's definitely been fun, but you know, looking at it, like you, you have to outweigh kind of the, the pros and cons, right? Because if you have Airbnb, now you have to buy, you have to furnish everything, right? Then you have to pay for all the cleaning supplies. You gotta pay for toilet paper, paper towel, everything that a tenant would pay for, you have to cover. So you have to make sure you'll get more of a return. So right now we're in that uh, exploratory phase, I would say, right? Seeing how much money's coming in, where our costs are, does it make sense? So our hypothesis is we think it's gonna make more money. Uh, we hope so. If not, there's always a fallback. Can you talk about some of the investments you had to make and then also some of the costs and expenses that come with it? Yeah, I mean, the biggest, the biggest, you know, expenses we had was, I would say the bathrooms, right? Updating those, tile, vanities, kitchen, doing a new countertop, right? Granite, all that costs money. And then too, a lot of the, a lot of the things that people don't realize, that I was talking to my partner as well, was the furnishings. That stuff adds up quick, right? Like you have a dresser here, you have um, a brand new bed, you have sheets, you have to pay for multiple sheets, right? You have cleaning supplies. That stuff starts to add up really quick and I don't think people really think about that. They just think, oh great, Airbnb or Verbo, short-term rental, let's do it. Yes, probably over time it'll make more money, but it does cost quite a bit to get it up and running. So that's something you have to think about too. Exact budgets that we had, I don't have that offhand, right? Go look at the number and spreadsheets, but I will say it was close to 100,000 just for finishing this up, right? Um, redesigning it, furnishing it. So cost quite a bit. It's a three bedroom, three apartment. When somebody moves in, like how much furniture, TVs, that stuff that they have, right? So yeah, cost quite a bit. What does your day-to-day -day look like from when you very maybe started 
planning this to now? Day to day, how things change where it started to where it is now is how it started was talking to contractors, right? More of like project management to update the bathrooms and, you know, painting and things like that. More project management. Now it's more of operations of running, you know, the Airbnb. So talking to guests, figuring out systems. Me tomorrow, I have to come and clean because our cleaner can't clean, right? So you have to be able to do those things. So it basically went from project management to operations. It, luckily, I have two other partners who are awesome. So we all kind of help and contribute with that because I still do have a day-to-day -day job. You know, I own a software company, so that's like the main thing. But, you know, um, my other partners are more and less in real estate. So we all kind of help where we can, which is great. Moving forward with advertising, are you going to focus this mainly on getting it off of Airbnb and stuff like that? or are you going to do any traditional advertising? Is that even a thing? I mean, marketing is far. I mean, it's great because if you're on those websites, they have a huge audience, right? And they have multis of millions of dollars of marketing budget for Airbnb, right? Verbo. And, and I think too, like our market where we're at is not saturated yet. So I think we have an advantage. Now, let's say you're somewhere where there's a market that's, that's highly saturated. I think you need a marketing plan. I think you need to stand out whatever way you need to do that. If I were to guess, you know, what I would do for a marketing plan, I would number one, give it time. So like a year of data, I would see where people are coming from, what's the most places people are coming from. Then I would just run targeted ads, Brian YouTube, pre-roll uh, for sure. Be like, hey, you're coming to Grand Rapids, check out our you know place, uh, click here to book. As far as getting off those platforms, what I would like to do that I found, sorry, Airbnb, if you're watching this, I doubt it, but the most profitable things you could do are getting repeat customers and guests who come directly to you. So they say, hey, Chris, I'm, I'm back in town. I just wanna send you a Venmo or I wanna give you a check to state your place. We don't have to pay fees to BNB. I think it's like a 15% fee that we have to pay every single time. So our rates vary from, for this whole thing, like 300 bucks a night to 700 bucks a night. Weekends is like 700 during the day is like 300. So it'd be nice to get off those platforms and kind of market to those people, you know. And another thing that we could do for marketing is once we get a good enough guest list, we could do drip email campaigns, reach out to those people and say, hey, are you coming back? Maybe if you refer somebody, we'll give you a discount or give them a discount if somebody's coming to Grand Rapids. So there's a few things. We just need to give it time. It's been four weeks since we had it listed, right? So it's gotta give a little bit of time, but um, kind of familiar with a little bit of how to run different campaigns, so we'll see. Can you talk about the occupancy that you would need to be profitable, or is there a standard? Is there does it vary based on what you own? Yeah, I mean, I think right now I looked at it in the BNB app. I think we're at like to start 18% occupancy. So not, not, I mean, that's not great, right? You want more for sure. I mean, the the more is better for us, but you know, just kind of kind of putting it out there. So like, we actually purchased this cash right? So the building and put everything in cash, you know, we haven't refinanced it. So we have a little bit of flexibility with that, you know? So, I mean, we, we have targets, like I would like to be at 50% occupancy, right? You know, especially on like the weekends to hit those numbers. But I mean, for, for us, it's like, Hey, let's try this. Let's see where it's at. Let's see what the potential is. Cause it's so hard right now to gauge like where we need to be and what we're at. Cause we don't even know our daily rate on average. Like it's kind of all over the place because we're kind of seeing what other people are doing what are hotels doing, when people book, when will they book during the week? Like, are people looking for big groups? How many people are looking for big groups in our market, right? So it's all kind of up in the air right now. What we really have to do is we'd have to run our expense report and see, hey, what do we have to do if we make a break even? You know, we know what it costs, right? And like over time, what it's gonna take to make, just make more than we put into it and hold it for a long time. Right, for sure, you know, but we're not, we're not super pressured right now. Like we have to hit this number every single month for this like you know so it's kind of it's a little less pressure than like a bank is beating down your door and saying hey you got to pay five six grand every single month and if you don't you're coming out of pocket right and you know that's, that's a little more pressure so we don't have that fortunately ideally we want to do like around three thousand at least per month but we could go up to like you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars per month, maybe ten if like if we get a lot of bookings and increase the prices. But we kind of lower the prices the weekdays because we want more weekday travelers. We're getting really booked on the weekends, but the prices you know higher there. And 
We are trying to find something downstairs too, to rent that out. But we're currently we're doing vents down there. So we're getting a lot of people book up here and then to see the vent space and rent down there and then the, both units. So that's a little different. Um, pull and this one person reached out to us and they want to like book the space uh, regularly, like three, four, four times a, a week. But in terms of revenue, I mean, the nice thing about Airbnbs is, you know, if you just rent this upstairs out, you probably get maybe 3,000 to 3,500 to just run out to one person. Here, we can pretty much ensure we get, you know, 3,000 dollars a month, but we, now we can get up to, you know, five, seven, eight thousand dollars So you definitely make a nicer return. But you had the risk, you know, people coming and going and the maintenance and the time he has spent and the cleaning units and booking people coming and going and, you know, some of the complaints and stuff too. But so far we had really good complaints and like we had, you know, five star ratings so far. So, so the concept of Delphin is that you can come downtown and you can rent the upstairs out and, you know, stay the night here, multiple nights that you want. But the unique thing here is you can have event space downstairs up to 50 people downstairs. If you rent both spaces out, you can go up to like 80 people, but you can stay the night here, have your own friends and family, your own boutique event downstairs. And it's just a different concept um, for people to kind of have their own, you know, hotel with event space downstairs and have people they want to come see them and celebrate any occasion they would like to for their own special events. What are some of like the positive things that you found out and what are some of the negative things? Negative thing, I'll tell you one of the biggest negative things. So downstairs we have an entire open space, right? And we thought, hey, it might be good to, you know, try to rent this out to some people we know on Facebook. So we posted it right on Facebook. Hey, you guys want to rent this little space we got downtown? It's open and the first b and guests that we had stayed here. The people that rented downstairs actually paid my partner 200 bucks to stay till 2 a.m. You can probably guess what happened. They were not happy. They, they actually left the b and We had to totally refund them. Uh, they were mad about noise, smells, you name it. And it got progressively worse as the night went on. And they were up here for a graduation party. And uh, so, yeah, I learned that's not good. So probably don't have like an event space or don't rent or have a party downstairs while you have a b and you know, upstairs. That's probably pretty bad. Another thing too is this laundry is like a big, obviously it's a big thing. Like you have to wash and keep everything fresh, but you have to have multiple sheets and you have to have a pretty good washer and dryer right? Especially if you have big comforter sheets, you have three different beds, you have to run three different loads per that bed. And that takes a long time. Like imagine when you do laundry at home, how long that takes just to do like your bedding and your blankets, right? That takes like a couple hours times that by three and times that by say two sets, that takes almost all day. So we're trying to figure out logistics of when we have a cleaner come, can we pay that cleaner extra? They take those, you know, uh, sheets and blankets home fold them, bag them up, bring them back. We have some on hand, we kind of rotate them. So we're trying to figure that out, but that's just like an unknown to me that I didn't really think about how much time that would take and effort. The first time we did it was we were in a pinch and I think it was our second guest that was coming. We actually went to the laundromat and we spent $300 at the laundromat to wash everything to get it done within like an hour and a half because we had to, you know, it was, uh, so it's kind of a nightmare, but so yeah, don't do that and just understand laundry. Have a good system and good, you know, washer and dryer for that. Uh, so some of the good things that I found was, I mean, we got a couple good reviews and like people loved it. For me, what I like is I like the hospitality side of things. I like dealing with people. I like customer service. That's kind of where I had my roots when I was in college, waiting tables. So I enjoy that. For me, that's fun. And I also, you know, I'm pretty optimistic about the upside that this will make more money than traditional just renting right to a couple of renters. Uh, so that definitely excites me too. You know, I say those are like two and two things that definitely learn. So yeah, negatives, number one, don't have a party downstairs, don't have an event going on, figure out washing and drying logistics for sure. One positive thing is we got it all finished and done. So that's exciting. And we're getting a lot of booking so far. It's been up and open for three weeks. And I think you have like around $10,000 in like revenue altogether. Some already went or passed and some's upcoming. The worst thing that happened was just some people couldn't get into the property and the toilet was uh, not working at one time. 
or the furnace was not working at one time, so we had to get the, come here and get the furnace on. And one time, the hot uh, there's no hot water, so we had to turn the hot water on. But other than that, yeah, as long as you do a little preventive maintenance and make things sure everything's good to go before it, someone comes in, it's pretty simple. Some people just like don't know how to get to the front door, like you know the keypad you had to hit it and then it turns on. But I'm sure that we just started, there'd be a lot more horror stories. Hopefully not, but you never know. The reason we got into that space down there and tried to rent it out was Brent actually found a pop-up that paid us two grand for a week to rent that space down there. And we we're like, you're gonna pay us two grand for five days? And they're like, yeah, we're like, all right, we're done, easy, you know? So then, you know, we started posting on Facebook and trying to get, you know, pricing down. And uh, yeah, so, so that's how we kind of got into that main space trying to rent it out, you know, to friends and people we know uh, as far as that, but found out it doesn't work well with Airbnb. So yeah, kind of killed that, trying to find a tenant. So if you're interested and you want to rent some space, we got it downtown. What are your, some of your plans on growing or expanding? Yeah, I mean, expansion, so we actually do have a deal. Can't say much, but if it goes well, we might expand, have three more, which would be cool. But as far as the b, &B goes, really at the end of the day, this is real estate and that's what I want to invest more in and what I want to get into more full time. Like when I'm early 40s, I'm early 30s right now. So I'm trying to give that time. And really it's just real estate at the end of the day. So it could be more B&Bs, expanding to more mixed use. We have a couple tenants downstairs. So it's mixed use building, right? So that's, that's awesome. So you have commercial, residential. I like that a lot. We actually have another property over on the um, southwest side that's mixed use. So we have two commercial on the bottom, three apartments on top. We were thinking about doing B&B with that, but we just kept those three apartments. And we're looking at another pretty cool deal right now, actually, to expand. And we're thinking with that one, we'll probably actually convert three apartments into B&Bs if things go well, but that takes time because we have to see what the leases are, when do those end, we can't just kick people out and uh, we have to run some numbers and that will for sure be financed by a bank. So we definitely have to run harder numbers than like, hey, let's buy something for cash and you know, try it out. So I would say like, for this one, where we're at is an experiment to see if it goes well. If it does, for sure expand and keep a, a similar concept with it. But yeah, always expanding the real estate, looking for deals and you know, keep things going. The best way to buy a home, a digging real estate would be your first home, right? You get, you know, FHA loan with like three to 5% down. You find a good place, less money into it, you know, fix it up here and there, but that's the best way to lose less money in your home. And then hopefully you fix it up, make it nice, and you sell it, make some equity, and then you can refinance that equity and take that equity into putting a bigger deal, or you could sell the home, get another home, and have more equity. You could still, once you sell your home, you can do another FHA loan with a little bit of money down. Um, but that's the best way to own real estate. The best way to get into real estate is probably like get your real estate license <laughs> and then start working for somebody. I think property management is a good way to learn a lot about. You can work for a property management company and learn a lot about real estate because you have to be a property manager to really own real estate because you have to know how to get tenants, how to find tenants, how to lease tenants up because real estate is essentially leasing space to people. But yeah, that's probably the best way to get into real estate. What got you into real estate and why do you think it's a good like opportunity for yourself? Yeah, uh, why you got into real estate? Well, I actually made a video on YouTube. Plug, just kidding. Uh, I stopped doing content a while ago. But yeah, the first real estate deal that I did, why I got into it, was in the back of my mind, I've always had professors saying, hey, you should invest in real estate. I knew nothing about it, never owned a home. I just rented an apartment, lived downtown, worked downtown, started my company downtown. And the reason I wanted to get into real estate was I wanted to buy this building and put my company into it. Cause I thought that was genius. I was like, wait a minute, we could have apartments on top that could cover the mortgage. We get a free office. I love that. And, but I had a couple other partners and like, no, we just don't want to do that. We don't want to move. So that's actually when I met Brent, my first business partner in real estate, and there was a building for sale. And he told me, I think we could do it for a land contract. So sure enough, I was saving up a little bit of money. I put the down payment on it. We bought it. That was 2017. We still have it to this day. It does really well. Uh, cash flow is pretty nice for us. After that first one, I was hooked. I just, lo I just loved it. Just there's so many financial reasons why I love it. 
But also the, another reason I loved it was like you own this piece of real estate. To me, that was so cool. And you could also get creative with it. So a lot of the things that we've done, getting creative with a space like this, to maximize it as far as ROI goes, right? Making it more than just cookie cutter apartments or something like that, make it cohesive with that space. So, so yeah, so it's just also fun to me. I enjoy it. You know, it's kind of like, why do people like making content? Maybe they just like it, right? So I, I just genuinely like it, you know, and, and that's why I want to get into more full time. But yeah, that was the first one after I was hooked. I was like, anything that I make and whatever money is going to try to go into real estate, you know, I'm gonna try to stay out of the Dogecoin hype and just let's keep buying real estate. Originally, I went to college to be a hotel developer because I wanted to be a doctor. I was, I went into Seattle an anesthesiologist and he was in the hospital all the time. People were dying. It's like a, just a weird setup. It's like, I don't want to be trapped in the hospital the rest of my life. And my friends again, in hospitality school. I was like, I really like hotels and like, it'd be cool to like develop a hotel and put it all together. So. I did that and then with that being said, kind of real estate kind of came with that and it started focusing more and more on real estate. And then in college, I watched this thing called the Zygast Movement and they developed, you know, sustainable cities. I'm like, I definitely might be part of like the future of how the world can be developed and essentially like how does a city look with all the information and to now actually have now master plan into like a yeah, community it looks so much different because in current real estate, we just keep tying on to the old infrastructure. But if you planned out a brand new city, it'd be designed so much differently how it's designed now. So that's kind of my future thinking. I'm kind of working on a project now in Costa Rica. But yeah, the kind of fell in the real estate realm. And then I created a company called Hige because I care about sustainability. Um, and that was an uh, interesting ride, you know, kind of like, you know, Chris was talking about service based company. This is like investment startup, you know, create a product and get the product to market. And that was a huge challenge. I mean, I wish we had a product to start, like just sell toilet paper and then switch over to like a innovative technology. Instead, we try to go into the sustainable technology that never existed. And that is quite the challenge. But. My main thing is, you know, real estate now. I got back to real estate. Can you just catch like why someone just say it? Number one, we're gonna give you a bag of Skinny Pop. Whatever popcorn you want, guaranteed we'll give it to you. And you know, as far as pricing goes, it varies right now. Right now, whenever you're watching this, where we're at, it's between $300 during the week, $700 during the day. That is 100% gonna change and fluctuate. Every single hotel fluctuates. Every single B&B fluctuates. It's just how it goes right it goes with the market goes with seasonality those are things we're still trying to figure out so if you want to have an experience that's going to be different from traditional hotel right you want to have basically half of a building to yourself hotel downtown grand rapids walking distance from any action or uh, venue downtown it's a little off division um but it's really cool an upcoming area division is actually a place uh, it's historic is where Grand Rapids actually started. You can go bar hop, you can come back here. If we don't have a tenant in the lower level, you wanna rent out the entire building, you can rent that out too. So I, I do think that makes us a little unique right now as well. We have three bedrooms, three bathrooms, sleeps about eight. You know, we have some couches, people crash in the couch. We put a lot of renovations in the property. Um, you can access in front or in the back. We'd love to have you stay here. You have three tips of advice for other entrepreneurs. Number one, I would say for entrepreneurs, uh, if you don't own a business, and you've never started one, ask yourself why. Truly ask that Is it, and be real about it. Is it financial freedom? Is it because you don't want to have a boss tell you what to do? You want to do what you want, when you want, whenever you want? Do you think it honestly just sounds cool? Some people really think it sounds cool. Like I'm an entrepreneur and a boss. That's totally fine. But I would just say before you even do it, figure out exactly why you want to do it. For me, it was freedom. It's financial freedom. It's also freedom to do what I want when I want. I'm sure you get some of the same perks and benefits and you probably love that aspect. So for me, it was freedom. And I would just say be really, really honest with yourself because it's not that glamorous. It is a lot of hard work. There is a lot of ups and downs. And I would say tip number two, is you have to deal with stress very well. You have to be the person in entrepreneurship, you're starting a business and a business owner, I would say somewhat competitive. I would say, you know, resilient for sure, because you have a lot of hard days, 
And if you're kind of the person who doesn't take stress well, or you shut down or lash out, any of those extremes, you may not do as well. You might do fine, but it's very stressful. So you have to learn that. And number three, I would say, you know, it's like, oh, what are the good things? I will say this, how about this, a good thing. Uh, if you get it going and you're somewhat successful, it's very cool to basically be like, hey, I'm taking off a week of work whenever you want. You can kind of short term plan it. You don't have to ask for PTO. If you have employees, you have a team, you're going to have to tell them. If you have clients, you're going to have to give them a heads up, but you still have that freedom to do that. So that is actually a perk and, and pretty fun, but it is nonstop. I remember my first vacation. Basically, we got kicked out of our first office. It was during Thanksgiving. It was a crazy story for another time. So you're always gonna be on. Understand that uh, it's a never ending job, but if you love it and you're successful, you're gonna be very fulfilled.